Track 6, Woofer Excursion Test. This track will test the woofer's ability to reproduce sub-bass frequencies without reaching the limits of its voice coil or suspension. In other words, to drop bottom without bottoming out. Be sure to disengage any equalizers, epicenters, or other bass enhancement devices, as they will not be necessary for this track. Now, the Ford Explorer. Watch carefully. You see this mark here? This pink here is from this side of the dummy's head. Dummy's head is the Explorer back. does a good Outside job protecting the, the dummy's legs, but the slow motion film shows the driver's door popping open. As the door comes open, that allows the body to come out, and as the dummy's going back in, his head strikes the pillar. That wasn't a high force, but it was a troubling impact. Take a look at the Jeep Grand Cherokee. There were very bad injury measures on both legs for this dummy. Part of the footwell in the Jeep is driven back 10 inches. There was a high risk of significant injury, fractures uh, to both legs in this crash. This concludes the Wolfer excursion test. If your Wolfers have not seized up at this time, they are now qualified for the following track. This is the Chevy Blazer. It looks pretty bad. There's a lot of intrusion in the foot, footwell area. The footrest has been driven back 13 inches. But in a test where broken legs are usually the most serious injuries, there is concern about this dummy's head major problems in this test you'll see how much violent movement there is the dumb is actually looking back up at you remember you're watching this car at 40 miles an hour the dummy goes into the airbag comes back hits that window frame so hard there's a dent left that is all happening because the structure around the dummy is collapsing Although the computer readings indicate no serious injuries to the chest or legs and no life-threatening injury to the head, O'Neill says the dummy's head hit hard enough to cause a concussion. We have not seen bad head injury results like this vehicle in any of the other vehicles. If you have never seen this before on another car or four-wheel drive vehicle, is it possible that it's just a fluke? It's never a fluke in a crash test when a dummy records high measurements. The structural collapse of this vehicle will happen over and over again. It's a function of the design. The precise movement of the dummy may not be repeatable, but if you run this test over and over again, the structure will collapse in similar manners. Insurance Institute for Highway Safety are trying to understand why one family minivan can look like this while another looks like this. All in the same test. There's just no room left back down here. Uh, I believe that that foot is separated from the leg. And the Institute's Brian O'Neill says some cars do well in the new test. This is the Ford Windstar. Now, this is by far the best performer. There's plenty of damage, but O'Neill says it's distributed around the driver, not into him. The safety cage holds. Any injuries at all to the dummy? The injury measures on this dummy were all low, indicating that there was no significant risk of injury to any body region. But the Ford Windstar survives this crash. No serious injuries, not even to the legs. But how well will the other minivans hold up? Three, two, one. This is the Dodge Grand Caravan, the top-selling minivan in America at 40 miles an hour. There is major intrusion. This means that the chances of major leg and foot injuries uh, in this crash are very, very high. The Institute says part of the floor near the pedals is rammed back more than a foot. And the news from sensors in the dummy is not good. Both legs. Mm-hmm. Both left and right. 
Watch the front tire. The Institute says the structure of the van causes the crash forces to be focused on the feet. As a result, both of the lower legs of the dummy indicated the risk of a serious injury. Would both legs have been broken? We think that in this crash, both legs would have been broken. That's correct. Remember, the Ford Windstar protected the dummy's legs. In the same test, the Dodge Caravan didn't. the Chevrolet Astro, also called the GMC Safari. It's jammed in there. The floor has buckled, tipping the driver's seat forward. This vehicle has almost got its back broken, if you know what I mean. It's come up and buckled. In slow motion, you can see how the airbag still manages to cushion the head. But at the feet, the floor is rammed back as much as 15 inches. The door jams so tight, it has to be cut open. The Institute says one leg is probably broken. But remember, this dummy is the size of an average man. What would have happened if this had been a woman shorter and lighter? A shorter woman would presumably have the seat further forward, so there would be even less space. As the seat's pitching forward, the steering wheel is coming back and up. This is a problem when we're losing what we call the survival space. But the Institute says even worse than the Previa is this brand new design from General Motors, the Pontiac Transport. Looks like massive amounts of intrusion. We've got the chin of the dummy on the steering wheel, which isn't good. The wheel is under the chin. See the steering wheel rim here? The slow motion film shows the dummy's head snapping back. The structure of the vehicle just collapses. It's obvious from his head motion that it's hit the steering wheel. General Motors says this is one of the few vans in which the seam welds, which hold sections of the car together, didn't separate. But the Institute says the floor has been rammed back as much as 19 inches. That's more than any other van. The dummy's left leg is trapped. It's not even budging. It won't come free, Jeez. even with a crowbar. It's not moving, is it? Technicians finally take the dummy apart at the knee just to get it out. But there's a problem. One of the speed readings for this test is too high. I got 41.4. It's only a mile and a half over test speed at the most, but the damage is so severe, the Institute decides it must do the test again. This is another transport. This time, the speed readings are perfect. But the damage is similar. Massive structural collapse. The dummy's left leg is trapped again. Well, this is really bad because the ankle is actually detached from the foot. I believe that's completely snapped off. So the loads on the dummy have been such that the metal leg, this is not a bone leg, this metal leg has snapped off. And on the slow motion film, watch carefully. What this crash illustrates is that when the compartment fails completely, as it's done here, and it's collapsing all around you, the restraint systems can't offer much protection. O'Neill says the head snaps back. The survival space collapses so much that the steering wheel is driven right through the airbag into the dummy. This time, the injury readings are even more serious. A major injury to the neck, to the cervical region. Is it possible that the person in this crash might have been killed? Well, we can never say for certain, just based on dummy measurements, but the forces were certainly high enough that the injuries could have produced a fatal injury. General Motors declined to talk about this test on camera. But in a letter, GM said to assure overall safety at a variety of speeds, it ran 72 crash tests on its minivan, including an offset test at 35 miles an hour. GM wrote, the minivan performed very well, but declined Dateline's request to release pictures of the test or the specific results. 